Let's take a look at a one paragraph response for Think Circa. The school uniforms and dress codes violate students' rights. A one paragraph response has seven parts a topic sentence, a reason, evidence, explanation, counter argument, rebuttal, and conclusion. The topic sentence is a sentence that states the topic and the author's position on that topic. Do school uniforms and dress codes violate students' rights? School uniforms and dress codes do not violate students' rights. It's really that simple. Do not say, I think. Do not say, in my opinion. Do not say, yes, because. Do not say, no, because. In the simplest way, just turn the question into a statement and answer it. Next comes your reason. Though the United States is called the land of the free, Schools, businesses, stores, and many public places have dress codes for their establishments. The reason is a statement of why you believe what you believe in your claim, in your topic sentence. Evidence goes on to elaborate on your reason. WAMS does not allow teachers to wear blue jeans except on special occasions. Fancy restaurants often require their patrons to wear shirts with collars. Even less fancy restaurants require shoes and shirts for service. Next, I have to explain how my evidence supports my reason. Dress codes are part of our society and are not limited to just schools. This is not enough for things circa, though. We have to have our counter argument counter-argument, you put forth your argument, and now you're going to address the opposition's argument against you. That's called a counter-argument. Some people view their style of dress as a way to freely express themselves and feel that dress codes infringe upon their constitutional rights. My rebuttal is where I explain why they're incorrect. It's true that the First Amendment protects freedom of speech, but the Supreme Court has ruled that there are limitations to that protection. Though never ruling specifically on the legality of dress codes, the court allows school districts to establish rules to prevent disruption of the learning process. Then my conclusion is a sentence that restates my thesis to wrap up my argument and remind the reader of my original claim. Though free speech and students' rights are important in a democracy, in most cases they are not violated when a school establishes a dress code. So altogether, a one-paragraph response would look like this. School uniforms and dress codes do not violate students' rights. Though the United States is called the land of the free, schools, businesses, stores, and many public places have dress codes for their establishments. WAMS does not allow teachers to wear blue jeans except on special occasions. Fancy restaurants often require their patrons to wear shirts with collars. Even less fancy restaurants require shoes and shirts for service. Dress codes are a part of our society and are not limited to just schools. Some people view their style of dress as a way to freely express themselves and feel that dress codes infringe upon their constitutional rights. It's true that the First Amendment protects freedom of speech, the Supreme Court has ruled that there are limitations to that protection. Though never ruling specifically on the legality of dress codes, the court allows school districts to establish rules to prevent disruption of the learning process. Though free speech and student rights are important in a democracy, in most cases they are not violated when a school establishes a dress code. During the revising and editing stage, you would want to go back and add transition words like, for example, therefore, in conclusion,